happen on the computer. Great. In my journey across U.S., uh, over the last three and a half years that I've started building this business here, I've had the privilege of traveling at least 28 states in the U.S. Um, this trip that I came, I've been in five of the states and, you know, I meet people as I travel around. You know, and it is challenging what we hear from people. A lot of people are, you know, seriously struggling. Many people are working from one paycheck to another paycheck. If something were to happen to one paycheck, everything just falls apart. So as a group of people, we want to let you know that you see, you're not alone. There are so many people around us, even though we don't want to be part of those statistics. We have family members, friends who are in that space. A lot of people are working really hard and they're still going to retire poor. Why? Because they don't know how to plan things and how to take care of things for themselves. Many people are going to do so much to be able to raise their children, but only to find that those kids are still going to go to school with a lot of student debt. And then that has now become a way of life for so many people. But here in this campaign and in this organization, we want to let you know that we have a solution for every situation that people might be going through. With time, dedication, commitment, and persistency, we can help people to get things done a little bit better. We want to help you to see how things are in the US, for example. There are this data from the Federal Reserve that shows where, you know, we have people in America today. Can you see this purple line? It's almost, you know, not on that map. That's where 50% of people in America today have. While this yellow-like place is where the remaining 40% is. Anybody that makes a, less than $150,000 per annum is in this 90% of the bracket. So what this means is that the bulk of the wealth in this country is concentrated in the hands of the minority, which is that, you know, 10% up there. How is it that the rich continue to grow rich while the average person continues to go poorer? If you look at where the millionaires in the world are today, the United States of America accounts for about 40% of millionaires in the world. The top 10 countries that have millionaires in them the number that we have in this country is more than ever, all of them put together. The question to you is, Sanyo, why am I not part of them? Why are you not part of them? Can you be a part of them? Angela, can you be one of them? My brother, can you be one of them? You see, the truth of the matter is this. Most of these 22 million people, they are not celebrities. They are not fancy people. They did not inherit money from anywhere. Many of them are just like, every other person like you and I, who have over the time using the right knowledge, the right you know, approach to their finances to be able to build with consistent planning and practice over the years. If that were to be the case, so what exactly is it that the rich know that the average person doesn't know? Maybe we don't know what the rich people do know, but in our research, we found some of the things that the poor people do and makes things to be a little bit harder for every one of them. You know, those people, there's bad habits, and then those poor decisions always stack up. For example, people don't have any sort of budget that they're working with as they find money they spend, right? People do not have any financial goal that they are working towards. They just pretty much just go and then live life like that. And if there's anything that you can never get back, it's the time that you wasted. More importantly, in planning financially. A lot of people who are poor are the ones that spend the most. They buy the best of the best designers that you see in the storefront. They want to drive the biggest of the biggest cars. But most of the time, they are doing this on credit, using bulk of their money to be able to pay, you know, back those credit cards or different types of loan. People don't have any emergency that they're working towards. They just know that, you know, when things happen, they have to start maybe go fund me or ask people to give them money or something like that. A lot of people are just working for a living from one paycheck to another paycheck and just hoping that something will change and then, you know, they will find a break. Nobody ever finds a break on you unless you work towards it. And a lot of people have even given up on life that they're not doing anything about it anymore. But our organization, World System Builder and World Financial Group, was saying that it is time for us to change. We believe in so much in financial education that when you get yourself financially educated, you can take your future into your hands because the future of everybody is not in the hands of the government of this country or the state of Maryland or your employer or, you know, your broker or whoever it is that you're working with. 
we have the right to decide how do we make money? How much of whatever we make should we save? How do we accumulate more? And then how do we protect all the things that we work for all our lives? With our financial education program, what we want to do is to help people to understand that you can be your own money manager once you have education about what you're supposed to be doing with your money. And if you understand how money works, you can then begin to make money work better for you. It's just like when you want to build a house, you need to understand that the first thing you do is to have a blueprint of what type of house do I want to build? If you want to build wealth, you have to have that kind of blueprint as well. How wealthy do I want to build? Before we can build a house, we have to lay the foundation and begin to, you know, start things off. Just like that in finance is the same way. The first thing we need to take care of is proper protection. Think about debt management. Talk about emergency fund. And ultimately, we want to talk about investment. If I talk to 10 people today and I look at this financial foundation structure, Nine out of every 10 people that I've spoken to in my experience working in this space is everybody is thinking about investments into the future. Nobody ever talks about debt management. Nobody ever talks about, you know, emergency fund. Really, do I find people talking about proper protection? It's great to save money. But you see, you cannot save money in the quantity that you need it when there's a big need for one. Saving a couple of hundred dollars on a monthly basis will not be enough when we are you know, critically ill, or if we were to die prematurely, it would not be enough for the people that, you know, we have behind. So like building a house, we want people to know that in building wealth, you have to also build it from ground up and starting with proper protection, even though everything is a great thing that you have to prioritize. But the first thing you need to begin to think about is when we get sick or get disabled or were to die prematurely, where would protection be? So, our job in this organization is to help people to move away from financial insecurity, just like the cloud that is hovering over this family, to the point where people can become financially secure with the right financial knowledge. But ultimately, where we want to get people to is where they can become financially independent so that they can begin to take their own future into their own hands. I'm just going to take a few moments to explain to you each of those pillars of, you know, financial foundation. Let's talk about proper protection, for example. What do you protect? I'm going to ask a question here today, and I want everybody to answer me, you know, realistically. And I'll start with you saying, heaven forbid that you get sick today and you cannot go to work for an extended period of time. How many years can you maintain the same lifestyle that you have right now? Two, three. Two. How many years? What about you, sir? Months? Angela? Months. Diana? Sorry, what's your name, sir? Carlton. Carlton. How many years into the future can you maintain the same lifestyle if income is not coming anywhere because you cannot work? The reason why we talk to people about proper protection is we want you to be able to protect your income. The reason why you can protect your income is you have to first and foremost protect your health. Because if you are not healthy, you cannot work. And if you cannot work, you cannot earn income. And then your assets are now at, you know, at risk. People run through their savings like this, like flashlight. And that's it. I met a gentleman, his name is Kelvin, when I was in um, you know, a place called Bettendorf in Iowa. And he said to me, I wish I knew about all of these things that you're saying to me now, seven years ago. I was sick about five and a half years ago. I ran through all my savings. I sold my house and I still have about $57,000 of medical debts that I have to pay. But thankfully, he's alive. But he cannot do the same type of work that he used to do anymore because of what his medical condition is now. Like the woman in, uh, with the umbrella. If you're in the rain and you have one, the way that person will get water on his or her body is going to be different from somebody who doesn't have any form of coverage. This is why the proper protection is very important. You say in America today, we have a lot of people that have so many debts, from student loan to credit card, auto loan, 
mortgages and other type of bank loan and personal loan, debt has now become a way of life for so many of us in America. But we want to let people know that there's a way you can get out of debt if you are ready to do it. And with the help of some of our financial professionals on this platform, you can walk through that. If you take nothing away from here today, I want you to pay attention to this next slide. You see, for every household in America, most people have mortgages. They have different types of debt, credit card, auto loan, bank loan, whatnot. Let's look at this case here. This is an hypothetical situation about $400,000 of debt. If this person pays the minimum payment that they're supposed to pay on a monthly basis, it will take them at least 30 years to get out of this debt. Imagine somebody who is 30 years old. That is the better part of that person's life. And that person will not get out of debt until, say, age 60. But we want to say this. Can we help people to find a better way and faster way to get out of debt? Just introducing extra $100 into your monthly payment. How does that change things for you? Instead of this guy to pay just $10 here, while they're still paying minimum balance on the remaining one, can we face that with an extra $100? So pay $110. And that entire card is paid off in two months as against you know 19 months if the person was just paying minimum balance. Please don't go back into that card. Just cut it off. But don't cancel the credit because you need to build credit profile. Now you have 110 that is freed up. Can you roll it over into the next one? While you're still paying minimum balance on the remaining ones, now you can pay $160 here. And then in 10 months, that is paid off. You have 160 freed up now. And then just keep doing the same thing over and over until you get to the very last one. What we've done is to just slightly change what this person is doing by adding extra hundred dollars into the scheme of his payment or a payment nothing has changed we only change from 2782 to 2882 every month but the effect of that is what i want to show you because we are able to help this person find extra hundred dollars to put into his payment we can shorten the period of when this guy is going to finish paying his loan by almost 13 years so what's your name, sir? Corey. Corey. Karim. Karim. Now think about this, Karim. This guy now has 2882 free every month. And then you still have 12 and a half years left. If that guy put that amount of money into an investment on a monthly basis, what do you think the future of this person is going to look like? And I bet you the first time we sit down with this person, he says, oh, I don't see how I can get through this. And I've seen people who tell me that I don't have any extra $100 because I am always short. It's not enough. But what do we do? We sit down with people. We look at their PFS. We call it personalized financial strategy. I want to see where all your expenses, money is coming in. What are you doing with it? Do you know what I find most times? Most people get into Starbucks every money. And they buy coffee and maybe biscuit or something like that. Spend maybe $10, $15 on a daily basis on that. People have subscription to cable channels that they don't use. People have so many things that they're spending money on that they can do away with. If we can help you sit down and find those savings and help people to now be more, you know, into the discipline of being consistent with this, we can get people out of debt quickly. We talk about emergency fund. What does emergency fund needs to do? Now I'm able to pay off my debt. I don't want to go back into debt. But if my car were to break down, if I were to have a, you know, a major appliance in the house break down, what if I lose my job? What if my business is not doing well? What do I fall back on? Most people go back into credit card and all of that. But we want you to let you know. We want people to start putting money aside, however small. Pay yourself first so that you can be able to put money aside in the case that something were to happen. How do you feel when you go to work every day? I want to ask before I go on. What does it feel like, Karim, when you go to work every day? Like Say that again. It feels like going to work. <laughs> Have you ever felt like this? Because this is the way I say it. Most time in America today, at the end of the month, you just find that you made money, but you can't see anything in your bank account. Have you ever felt like that before? Anybody else felt like that before? 
How does that make you feel when you do that? I mean, when you're at that point? It's not hating yourself. You know the way I feel? It's like when I used to work nine to five, by the way, I felt like I'm the one that is doing all the work, but everybody else is collecting from me. The reason why I wake up every morning is because I want to pay my landlord. The reason why I wake up every morning is because electricity company will come knocking. That's the way I felt when I was doing, you know, work for other things. I mean, for my nine to five. It never felt like I was going to work for my family. Because most times you don't get to put anything aside for yourself. So we talk about emergency fund. And then lastly, we want to talk about investment. You see, most people want to invest and they don't do the remaining three things that are on that. Why? Because that is what the society tells you to do. But it's the wrong way of building wealth. Ask any billionaire that you find or any millionaire that you find. If they don't have this first in their business, they can already tell you that the business is going to crumble at some point or their wealth is going to be eroded at some point. You know why? Because this is what holds everything together. The base is gone. The entire enterprise is dead. So imagine a 30-year-old person who earns $60,000. And the person learns the concept of being financially disciplined, keeping a tenth of whatever it is that you get for yourself. Pay yourself first. If this person keeps 10%, that's $6,000 per annum, $500 every month. $17 every day, and that person puts in an investment. Let's say this investment can get a return of 8% per annum. For the next 30 years, that money will be about $745,000. If that person can find 10%, that will be about $1.1 million. Now, Karim, Angela, I'm not saying give me $500 and come back 30 years. I'll give you, you know, $750 sign you. What I'm trying to let you understand is you need to learn the process of how money works. Compound interest. Everything that you do to build wealth is compound. If you don't understand the concept of compounding, then you, we're in trouble. Now, look at how this person builds wealth. At the age of 60, the person is still not retired. I met a 64-year-old person this afternoon, and it was like, oh my goodness. I wish somebody spoke to me when I was in my 30s about all of these things that you're talking about. My life will be a lot different right now. And that's the concept of what I want to show you here. By the time this person, let's say this lady gets to age 60 and says, you know what? I don't want to put any money into this thing again. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. When I get to retirement, I can benefit from what it is in there. At 8%, that money will double every nine years. And that will be about $1.5 million. At 10%, slightly over seven years, that money will double to about $2.3 million. Nobody ever built wealth like this. Wealth has been built over the years for every wealthy human being that you can talk about. Think about any successful person today. They just didn't come out of nowhere and then they became wealthy. They built whatever they built over an extended period of time. However long is how, you know, big they built. We want people to understand how taxes work because that's one thing that not so many of us understand. Can I ask you a question? Is there anybody in this room that is related by blood? Anybody? Is there anybody that is a family member of another person related by blood? No. But you see, all of us in this room, we have one uncle in common, even though we're not related by blood. Uncle Sam is related to each and every one of us. And that uncle demands at any point in time, whatever he or she, you know, he wants from any one of us at any point in time. And by way of, you know, where are you investing your money? That is what gives Uncle Sam, our uncle, how much he can take from you. If you put in a tax now account, you pay tax immediately. If you pay in a tax later account, you pay, you know, tax at a later time. If you put in a tax advantage account, you don't pay any form of taxes because you pay it up front. Are you paying too much more than what you're supposed to be paying? For those of us who have children, I was just talking to you about, you know, education. 
Do you want to learn about how to get your college, I mean, your children into a good school with proper funding? You can use our college planning program to get people into school. You want to know what is right for your kid. We have two major, in, you know, partners that we work with, Life and then Educated Campus. I mean, please get somebody to, to hook you up with any of those things and then they can help you. We want to talk to people about how retirement should work. How many people here does, you know, W-2? You get paycheck like every other week. How many people? Have you ever seen your paycheck when you collect it? Do you see that deduction, cost social security, FICA? Do you check them? Have you ever asked yourself where the money is going to, what the money is from? Because you see deduction every time. Do you know what that is? We want to help people to understand how they're going to optimize their social security. There's a research that has shown that every retiree in America today, no, sorry, not every, most retiree in America today are leaving money on the table. You could get an extra $200,000 of social security income in retirement if you understand how the system works and then you learn the process. We teach that as part of our workshops now that we just introduced as workshop number seven. There was days when I went to, you know, check this. And guess what? Some people can even make extra income of up to $2 million dollars in their social security, depending on the strategies that they choose to optimize their social security. All you got to do, get into our social security, you know, optimization workshop. I think the workshop number set, whoever I invited you can show you the schedule of our, you know, workshop. Learn about that. It changes everything for so many people. When should you claim your social security? You know, what is the importance of Medicare? Are you going to have to pay for medical expenses? What about taxes in retirement? Then we begin to hear from different people about, you know, what our campaign has done for them. You see, one of the reasons why I joined this business is because I believe it's the best thing for anybody to be a part of. Don't get me wrong. There are so many things that you can do in America today that can get you to be successful. But you can quote me on this next two statement. There is not many of them out there that you can find people that look like you and look like me and look like her who are immigrants in this country and are successful as you can find on World Financial Group. You can quote me anywhere. This organization is where you have the most successful immigrants in this country. That's number one. Then number two is that there are so many opportunities out there that can change your life in this country. But there's not so many of them that can change your life in a faster manner this business changes your life. We have so many people who have given testimony about what this business did for them. But the one that I like to talk most about is this man, my friend, Sikanda. He says, when I came to the workshop, it changed my mindset about money. With the help of people from World System Builder, he said he created a personal financial strategy and found that he was way behind on his retirement goals and grossly he was underprotected. But the education and the support that he got from this system has changed and saved his family. Now he said he's very proud to say he's on his way to building a strong financial future for himself and his family. What are we inviting you to be a part of? We just want you to come and be a part of this financial education program that we run. I can tell you for a fact, nobody is going to be ever successful in life financially unless you have financial education. You know the reason why I know? So many people have made so much money in the past and they're still poor today. Why? Because they didn't know how to apply the things that they've made. But if you have the knowledge, you can do better. We have over 600 financial centers right now, both in the U.S. and Canada, where we're teaching people about financial education. You don't have to come to any of the financial centers if you don't want to come, but we encourage you to please come because there is love in community ship. When you come into the midst of people who are doing well, that environment changes things for you. So if you find yourself not too far away from here, please come in here on a regular basis. Join and participate here. What are the workshops that we teach people? Workshop number one, we talk about building savings and wealth. Workshop number two, we talk about how do you increase your cash flow and manage debt. 
workshop number three, we talk about how do you prepare with proper protection. Number four, your health and your wealth. Number five, how do you have good understanding of asset accumulation strategies? Number six, each person has goals that they have for their future. How do we fulfill those goals? And then we just introduce another one, number seven. How do you optimize social security? We have a community that is dedicated to empowering and educating people across US and Canada. We are right now about 90,000 people strong doing financial education across these places. Our organization, World Financial Group, had over 70,000 licensed agents across US and Canada that are helping families with their financial education. How do we do that? We go into people's homes, people calling us into their homes. Today alone, I've been into five different family homes, just talking to people across, you know, different parts of Maryland and Baltimore. You know, we use public places like libraries, community centers, and stuff like that. We go to schools and universities. Can everybody see the name of the school? We've taken this financial education to Harvard. And you know the funny thing? Two professors from Harvard join the platform because they see value in what we do. This is Columbia University in New York, where, you know, one of our very good friends here from this office, this is Raquel Slowinski, that's her picture up at the back there, teaching financial education in the School of so Social Works, you know, in Columbia University. We go to places of worship like churches, mosques, temples, synagogues to be able to talk to people about our financial education. We use small businesses and large cooperation. Oracle, L'Oreal, the big cosmetic industry uh, giant, they've invited us to come and, you know, educate their people, their, you know, uh, employee community. We go to government agencies and, um, you know, different places. This is Raquel again at FBI, where, you know, she's gone to be able to give our financial education. Chicago Police Department just recently gave us endorsement to now say we can officially say that they are supporting our financial education. We are going to be mainstream organization in this country in years to come. We started this major mainstream financial education and we're taking it somewhere. Family and friends. And then now because of COVID, we've started using, you know, online to be able to help people. But what I love most about what we do is not the financial education. It's the fact that we're giving back to different people, to different communities. It's not enough to make money, but you do, we live in America today. You can have, you know, clean water like this. There are some places back home in Africa, in Asia, South America, where they cannot find, you know, the kind of water that we find. You go into the washroom today or into the bathroom, you turn the water and you just left, leave it open. There are so many people out there who don't have access to clean water. We have a partnership with Charity Water today where we're funding them to be able to provide water for different initiatives. And we're very proud to say with all the corporations that they are working with, like Amazon, Google, and the rest of them, our organization is number one partner that they have because we've contributed the highest amount of money to that, you know, initiative. In the last three years, I think we've contributed about $3.2 million to them to be able to provide water for 16.8 million people across different countries in the developing world where they need this the most. But you see, there's a new normal that has happened to us, COVID. And that changed a lot of things for so many of us. COVID changed our life. So many things happened with COVID. I don't want to go back to it. It's harrowing enough. But let's look into the future. COVID changed our lives. And the way this thing changed everything for so many of us is in the history of this country, a lot of people passed away more than we could ever imagine. And that made a lot of people to res resign to fate to say, you know what? I'm not doing that job again. A lot of people are having several, you know, awareness about what they need to do. And the truth of the matter is people are changing and looking for a be be better future of work. And just like we said, when you want to build financial foundation, you want to look at the blueprint. But today we bring you another blueprint for how you look at the future of your work. You see, there are so many people in America today who are looking for freedom. 
freedom of time, uh, freedom of money. We ran a survey, I think about four years ago. Most people say that they go to work because they just want to work. It's not because they enjoy what it is that they do, but they have to do it because they want to make money. A lot of people are looking for flexibility, working on their own schedule. Not necessarily saying, oh, you have to do five nights of, um, you know, this, if you can't do it, forget about it, and then that's it. I don't know about you. There are so many people in this country that have never left the city that they were born. Why? Because they cannot afford to. They have to go to work and do all manner of stuff. People are looking for different lifestyle. But we want to say to you that it is time for you to do something that gives you purpose, to be able to help other people, to be able to bring something new into this world. Life is too short for us to just work for a living. And that's why we want to invite you today, Sanyo. We want to invite you, Karim. I didn't ask after your name. What's your name, ma'am? Angela, too. Okay. It is time for you to begin to think about, we want you to come in here to be a part of a business platform that has diversified, you know, platform, one of the fastest growing organizations in America today. We want you to see that we have incredible track record of people who have built wealth here, who have become financially independent. And many more people are becoming financially independent, making good money on a part-time basis. Mm -hmm. I sat down on that same chair on Tuesday when in this organization we celebrated somebody in another financial center not too far away from here in Lago. Immaculate made $250,000 in the last 12 months working part-time in this business. How many people in corporate America working full-time makes $250,000 a year? There's no how people can be said to be free until when they have what we call full financial freedom. It is a journey for us, for each and every one of us on this platform to walk towards financial freedom. We're inviting you, Karim, to come and be a part of that process. We're inviting you, Angela. We're inviting you, Sanyo, to come and be a part of that process so that you can begin to say, you know, you're walking towards your own financial independence. Don't get me wrong. We know you're getting something done right now, but we believe that you can enhance whatever it is that you are doing with better and more. If you keep doing what you're doing right now for the next 20 years, what do you think your future will look like? Life, we say, is all about choices. You have to make a decision about what the future is going to be. There's only one way you can save your future. You have to be able to get new knowledge because if what you were doing all these years can get you to where you want to be, you should have been there by now. So we need to change our thinking. We need to change the way we look at the future and then get more knowledge and make more money. But we want to also build another future for ourselves away from what we currently do today. How can we be a part of this organization, start our home business and begin to build something into the future? But we have a bigger and a better campaign that is bigger than each and every one of us here. We want you to become a, be a part of something that is even more larger. We have a very lofty goal of wanting to educate 30 million people by the time we get to year 2020. I mean, 30. We will get there. But it will be more loftier if we get there with you, sir. And ultimately, we want you to make a difference in this world. What do you want to be remembered for? Build a legacy. Leave something to your family. Unite everybody and then be able to help the less fortunate. We want you to come and join us here so that we can fight debt together for people. We want you to come and join us here so that we can first and foremost help to fight financial insecurity for each and every one of us and then help other people in the process. And ultimately, to be able to fight financial illiteracy across the US and Canada and other parts of the world. We are very comfortable to say that we will get to the 30 million people. But how about you taking us to your own community, taking us to your own community and let us get to them faster and be able to complete this you know, in a faster manner. And I'm going to finish with this, you know, sort of this survey. Do you right now feel like you have an advantage in this economy that is going on in America today? 
can you conveniently 100% say, you know, you feel that you have an advantage in this economy? Did you suffer any loss from, you know, the last three years of COVID and all of that in any way? Now, what's going on? Oh, were you sharing something? No, no. I don't know. Anyway, that's the last slide, by the way. I can ask the question. Yeah, you can be asking. Okay, thank you. Are you concerned about any of the following? Let's read it together. Do you have too many bills or debts that you have to take care of? Anybody here? Yes. Do you have any concern that you don't have enough savings or investment for retirement purposes? Yes. Yes. Do you have any concern about not having enough protection in the event that you had become disabled or you should have to have long-term illness or even premature death? Is that something that is of concern to anybody? Yes. Do you support children or aging parents or you have people that are dependent on you? Are you concerned about the future of your job or your career? Yes. Do you feel like any of the following concepts, investment, insurance, debt, inflation, taxes are confusing to you? If any of those is something that you, you know, you answer yes to, I'm very happy to tell you that we have a financial solution for you. Number one is, do you want to get your kids into good college with proper funding? You said you want to, so yes is the answer for you, but I don't know about every other person. Yes. Do you want to learn how money works so that you can build a stronger financial foundation for yourself? Maybe you are not interested in making extra money, but if you are one that is interested in making money on a part-time basis, what would that look like for you? Is that something that you're interested in? Do you want to explore a new business career in the financial services, which is one of the fast growing industries? If you answer yes to any of these, just get back with the person that invites you and ask them, so how do we get this fixed? This is what our campaign is all about. And so I want to say thank you for taking the time to listen to me. I appreciate the fact that you came. But you see, the truth of the matter is this. This gentleman here traveled all the way from Massachusetts to come all the way down. I didn't come because of this, but I traveled all the way from Canada to help some people that I've introduced into this business in Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. She traveled all the way, you know, from Boston to come here. If there was nothing in this business, we would not be traveling around like that. My life changed totally because I paid attention to the person that, you know, brought me into this business. I hope and I pray for you that you listen and then get yourself interested in this. Next year, a couple of months down the line, two years from today, I want to hear your story. As I travel across the U.S., I hope that I meet you and I see you again on this you know, journey of how we help people. I need to take my leave now, but I'm really very glad that I was able to stop by and, you know, and help with this. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Wow. Another round of uploads to PC. Isn't he amazing? My sister, I apologize. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, BC. What a blessing hearing from one of the biggest uh, uh, men in, <laughs> in, in the industry. Of course, just six years in the industry, but he's really rising and rising and rising. Because whenever, when you join this business, you learn a lot. When when I talk to you, Karim, Karim, let's just be honest. I've talked to you about this. 
Did you learn anything? So this business, it, uh, being part of this business is, is something that is uh, very beneficial because you keep learning every single day. Michelle, he has been in the business for how many years? Yes. Huh? Me? Are you? Um, 14 years. 14 years. Did you, did you learn anything today, Michelle? Oh my God, yeah. Because truth of the matter is when it comes to finance, you can't say, I'm going. You can't. Every single day, there is something to learn. There is something to learn. There is something to work on. And if you don't work on yourself, trust me, Sanyo, anytime you're going to crash. If you don't work on yourself, if you don't fight Mama Angela to, to, to learn, anytime you're going to get, to get down, do you have enough protection? Do you have an emergency fund? Do you have... So there is something to learn every single day. That's why we invited you here. And I am very happy that you guys made it. Um, I know if I had said I have a birthday party at this uh this address, the number would have been bigger and bigger. But guess what? Things that actually matter, very few people give, pay attention to them. I, I myself saw this opportunity from Facebook. As I was perusing through, I was very bored and distressed and, and very, I, I felt like, oh my God, I need to go home. I need to go back to Uganda. I don't just understand what America has. This cannot be the America that I was dreaming about. So I was very depressed. So, when I was going through Facebook, I saw a post, a very simple post, where someone was saying, when Ugandans come to America, we get, we, 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 we are normally within the same bubble, same community, same, or everything that uh, Sanyu knows is what I know. We rarely go out of that bubble to find out what does America have. So I had been thinking about this all the time that I had been in America. That is three years by then. I was thinking, this cannot be America. There should be another America. So when I saw that post, I said, this girl, she thinks like me. I need to meet her. When I met her, they explained everything that BC explained. My, they were talking about me. Oh, we don't budget. Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> oh, we don't have a uh, we don't have a retirement plan. Yeah, true. Guilty. Oh, we don't plan for college. Guilty. Oh, we don't plan for, uh, we, we have a lot of debts. Guilty. Okay. <laughs> oh, we don't care about protection. Guilty. I was guilty on everything that, he, that they were talking about. So I said, oh, this is my life. It is my life that they were showing here. So if this is my life, then it is someone else's life. And if I don't talk to that person, they are going to suffer. So since then, that's how I decided to join this campaign. Simply to talk to one extra person. That's why, Mama Angela, you, you, you see me sending you videos. You see me, because I feel like I need to bring this out to my community. I feel like I want my people to understand what I know. Because in the last two years, I've learned a lot. And when I, from the look of things, I don't know nothing. Now, how about those people who haven't even gotten a chance to sit here? We have a DMV group. We have over 300 people. But look, how many are here? 
So all those people are in the same scenario. But guess what? They don't know. I normally tell people we don't know what we don't know until somebody who knows talks to us. So it is high time we changed. It's high time we learn and get learning so that we can teach our children this, these things of working. So, you know, three jobs must stop with us. We, we must understand that we are in America now. So we must learn how America lives, how people in America live. How do they manage their finances? We are in America. And unless we learn that, every single day they are going to send you, Sanyu, uh, go find me. Let's help Karim, he's very sick. Oh, let's help Mama Lira, she's... Oh, let's help. We can't live in such a life. So thank you very much. Um, it's time for questions. Before I introduce Michelle, because we are in the life insurance month, I want Michelle to briefly talk about life insurance because it's the September. September in, in the whole of America is a life insurance awareness month. So Michelle, we are, we are going to get a simple break, five minutes, and Michelle will take like, a few minutes to, to talk about life insurance. But before Michelle comes, I want to welcome questions. Um, if someone on Zoom or someone here has any questions about what BC uh, talked about, please ask. So invasion, like those blocks and the bottom one of the protection. Yes. So for the protection, does it mean like insurance, health insurance, and life insurance, everything that's the protection? Exactly. <clears throat> so protection is basically protecting yourself against anything. And the best way to protect against anything is insurance. America runs on insurance. Everything that you buy, they will tell you, please put insurance. You buy a TV? Insurance. You buy a phone? Insurance. You buy a plane ticket? Insurance. You buy everything. But do we like insurance? No. It's still our money. They steal our money, right? <laughs> that's, what, that's what we say. Why? Because we don't understand. Once we understand how insurance works, once we understand that I can actually live a life and get sick, all of a sudden, I am very healthy, right? But I could get sick tomorrow. And they tell you, hey, Munange Sanyu, Kaparaga cannot move. He, can, he can't even eat by himself. Can you imagine? He, we were with him just yesterday. That, that it, it can happen because it has happened to people that we know. And those people, I normally tell people, those people, God is not just angry with those people. It's it's human life. It's the life that we live. So unless we understand that this life is might happen to us anytime, then we must prepare. So that is all they talk about when 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 he mentioned about protection. And just like I said, Michelle is going to come here to talk briefly about life insurance and probably a, a little about other insurances. Any other questions, Sunny? Yes, for the investment part, the top one. Mm -hmm. So, um, what does the world system do that? Like, does it like invest in certain stocks or what? Like that return goes to about like a percent return. Or okay, that's great. That's a great question. Do we have? Do do we take your money and invest it somewhere? No. World System Builder and World Financial Group. World Financial Group is a platform, just like you see Amazon. Our job is to represent companies that you actually know that deal in the same. Okay. But the difference is 
you didn't know about what they do. You probably know Prudential, right? But you don't really know what Prudential does. You probably know Fidelity, but all they tell you, uh, there is a, there is so little to you know about it. There, you probably have heard of Nationwide. You probably have heard of Transamerica. So our job is to come to you, educate you about what they do, Okay, so you can understand how to use their, their services. Then we help you link up with them. But we are not an investment uh, company. We are not, um, we are not, we are basically an educating team. Yes, that's our job. Yeah, mama. So can say that you are a middleman. I know. You are collecting that people to the business. Exactly. So our job is to educate you such that you can use the services because they are super powerful services that you didn't know about. So you, you recommend or you are, it will just be an individual, depends on individual needs. So, recommend and... so when we run your personal financial strategy, mm -hmm. Personal financial strategy is a tool that understands how Angela is. Everything that we were talking about here is general life. Maybe Angela is good. She Maybe your kids are grown up. They don't even need college. But we are here talking about college. Okay. No, I'm just giving an example. So when we run your personal financial strategy, we understand what your challenges are. When we understand, because we are representing so many companies, then we shall tell you, okay, Angela, you have this challenge. This company is going to help you with this. You have this challenge. This is going to help you with this. So that is our job. We are licensed to educate you. Um, yes. Um, you have any question, big man? Uh, it's an overwhelming amount of information. I'm just listening. So this is not about sales, right? We're not selling stuff here, right? We are not selling anything. So we're not selling insurance. I'm not knocking on somebody's door and saying, I want to sell you life insurance. This is not what I use. If you, if you find, are you talking about if you're part of my team? Yeah. Okay. We are not talking about insurance, but insurance is part of what we do. protection. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. We talked about debt management. We talked about everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. But our job is to educate. We are knocking on your door to educate you. Maybe you have insurance. Am I going to give it to you by force? No. But probably, I, I, I've met a lot of people who have insurance, but they, did, they didn't even know how it works. They have a policy, but... Somebody was like, you need insurance, okay? Sign here. That's it. Okay? And guess what? I've hoped those people understand what they have. I don't really have to sell them what I, what I have. I just have to make sure they understand what they have such that they can be able to use it in case they need to. Okay, so, 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 so let's say somebody, an individual here, who's making minimum wages mm. are below the poverty line. Mm. Say they're making 30,000 a year. Mm. How are we going to help that individual go from that to, to, to at least 60,000 or double that thing to really get them out of the poverty? You know, how are we going to how are we, how are we plan to do that? That's a great question. You know? So, first of all, like I said, we, we run a personal financial strategy. Everyone has a different story. Maybe I am making 30,000, but I can save 10,000. And somebody like BC, who I said, she, he makes 250, he actually doesn't save anything. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? But again, when the way I'm going to handle BC, who has the money already, 
but he just needs to understand how to save it. It's not the way I'm going to handle Karim, who makes 30,000. He needs to make more money. So I can tell I can tell Karim, you know what? You need to make an extra income. It's, look at this. Well, you financially probably a little bit, you can manage here and there, but guess what? You need to do this and this. So we help everyone according to what we see in the personal financial strategist. So that person, that's your problem in the attorney. The problem is the people find that job and then you get them all to get themselves together to live in a short period to again eventually drop back that job. So, can you ask that question again? So the, the, the individual, that's the person who even below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. It could barely say if they're on food stamps, they, you know, government subsidy or whatever. That person may have to pick up a, a second backup job to, then you will help them all to manage, educate them, and, you know, to pay off these debts and, and, and get themselves to, to a better Exactly. Yeah, exactly. We need to educate them. Maybe they want to pick up another job, like you're saying. Maybe they can join us to educate people because we get paid to educate people. Maybe they can do that. Maybe they don't want to join us, but hey, they need to understand that they have these debts and this is the best way to manage the debts. And probably they've not heard from anyone. Talk about whatever BC just showed here. But when I talk, when I sit in front of them and tell them, you know what? You have this debt. If you do this, you can get out of debt and probably have an extra money to put in, in your emergency fund. Probably you can use this money to buy a house because I can see you have ambitions of buying a house. Okay? A lot of people want to buy houses, but they don't know, right? They don't have the money or they think they don't have the money. Now, how about you educate them, Sanyu, as a realtor, you, ex you educate them. Okay, you see, if you do this and this, you could probably get this money, put it aside, and then have more money to put down for the house. So it's all, the, the most important thing is the education. If you don't educate in our, uh, anyone, or if you don't educate that person, even if I come and sell you insurance, okay? $50, you can fail to pay the $50 a month. You can. But if I come to you, I educate you how you can get the $50, first of all, and then what this insurance is going to help you with, then you understand why you need to have that insurance, why you need to manage your debt, why you need to have an emergency fund, why you need to plan for college, why you need, because you're coming from a point of understanding. All right? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Can you talk about the paying your safe that you I think I didn't get this information that because that's one of the things that attracted me to this business, like to pay yourself to Oh, okay. Okay. Diana just mentioned something that I talked to her and she felt like, oh my God. And uh, sorry, sorry, Michelle. I am a hot cake here. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is just mentioned about Paying yourself. Um, most of the time, I normally tell people that we work so hard to please other people. Yeah. We pay for rent, okay? And we are very 
worried if we haven't paid our rent. We are very worried if we haven't paid for our car. We are very worried if we haven't if we haven't sent money back home. Oh my God, my my cousin asked me for two hundred thousand. I haven't asked. I, I haven't sent it. You're worried because why? She will get mad, right? You're worried because you will be sent out of the house if you don't pay. But how many times do you get worried for not paying yourself? How many times do you get worried for not saving in that week? We don't get worried. One, one uh, author said, most of the time we care about other people because they shout. The person in me doesn't shout, so we, don't, we rarely care about me. Now, when I was talking to Diana, I showed her something. That's what she wants me to share. That we are living in this world where our life is like this. Probably in your 20s, you have responsibilities. In 30s, you have kids, so more responsibilities. In 40s, kids are getting growing up. You have more responsibilities. You have parents, you have kids, you are sandwiched, okay? In your 50s, probably in your 60s, responsibilities are going down. In your 70s, not so many. But guess what? Your demands are what? Going up. Now, you can't work no more at this time. Do you have enough time, enough money? to help you cover the demands. Because now you need to go to the hospital more frequently. You need to eat well, you're in diet. You need to, will you have enough money to take care of you, Mama Angela? Will you have enough money <laughs> to go to the hospital frequently? That's why I want to, uh, our job is to educate people to understand how to save money when they were, when they are still younger. So this money, this money will grow as they grow. It grows as they grow, such that by the time they are in this time, they have enough wealth to take care of them. Because Karim, you're not going to be any younger than you are today. Am I right? <laughs> you're never going to be any younger than you are today so every moment in life counts every moment every single day you think I will do that you're pushing your life you're pushing okay so when I was talking to this lady I asked her that how about we pay you, okay? Because you pay for rent, that money goes to someone else. You pay for your car, it goes. You pay for uh, house. Huh? You you pay for you you send money to Uganda, Karim. Mm -hmm. huh? It goes to someone else. But how often do you pay Karim? How often do you get worried about paying yourself? Now, our job is to make sure you understand that paying yourself is not actually being selfish. So let's pay Karim first before we get worried about the rent. Before we get worried about the car. Let's worry about this person. So I gave her an example of two hours. That if you, Diana, if you decide to pay yourself two hours every single day, every day, Angela, that you go to work, you, dis, you pay yourself two hours. If you're making $20 an hour, 40. that is 40 Let's say you work five days. Of course, we work seven. But let's say five. That's 200. 
then you work uh, four weeks, right? Yeah. That's eight hundred dollars that you've given yourself a month, and that is nine thousand six hundred dollars a year. <laughs> Many people that I know make $80,000 a year. And they only get to see that on their W-2. And they will always be like, 80,000? Who? Me? Who else is working in my names? And it's you. I normally tell people, <laughs> look at your cash app. These days, they are so good that they give you the total amount that you've sent back home. Look at that money, Karim, and tell me how much of that is coming back to you. And calculate the number of years you've sent that money and understand if you had put some or just a half of it into yourself. Where would you be today? So unless we understand this, unless we understand that we are important, we are actually more important than anyone else, we are going to live the same life. Work, 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 feel very tired, feel like you can't work anymore. Tell people, please do me a part. I want to go home. And then they come, and Karim brings some $50, Sanyo brings 50 and gosh, then you go. I had a friend who was, I, I'm, I mean, this was 40 years. As soon as I learned all those things they are talking about, actually they were punching me, directing my feelings. So I joined. So when I went for the first convention, they came back, with all the excitement to tell it, my friends, because I knew that we got the same problems. We talk about them all the time. And this friend was one of them I kept to them. I called her, I called her, I called her. She, she was not even responding, but one day she answered me that. And then she sent me a bunch of pictures of doing a great project back home. And the, she was constructing the thing. I did set it to it. And he did I ask, what are you how to do this? Oh, my cousin is helping me, blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> I didn't want to discourage him, but I knew where we are going. I said, you know what? I'm going back home anytime because I need to plan. Okay. In my head, I know that whatever business I put back home and I put other people, normally it flops. So this year, in fact, this week, she was telling me the sad news. How this cousin woman she trusted and loved and whatever it has changed. Her. The man she sends her, he, go, he takes it, he invests in his own business, and even the kids he has also mess up with this one. She has now accepted to come and save them. Well, she was to her. She's seeing light is coming. So, I guess Thank you, Mamanda. So, Michelle is going to briefly talk about life insurance because of this month. Big man, welcome. How are you doing, man? Good, good. So, um, and then you could probably ask any questions if you have. Well, let's get a Michael. I'm Myth, but um, you know, this is actually a very proud moment. So thank you guys for coming. I know you're coming from different places. I know it's a little bit hot in here. Progress. I guess this is why they don't do BPM every um. Okay. Good. Am I? Yes. Okay. Anyhow, um, yes, thank you again for coming. So I uh, saw you. Where do you live in Maryland? I... Yes, yeah, Fort Washington. Oh, okay, Fort Washington. My first office was Fort Washington. 
I actually grew up in this office about four, uh, nine years ago. And then we expanded to Fort Washington and then from there to Boston. And that's where the whole Michael, you know, came out of. And um, and now we're back and, you know, we feel that this area, is, there's still a lot of people that we know personally that can benefit from this information. So here we are, long story short. So welcome. Uh, this is our financial center that we're going to be using every week. Uh, so we hope that you guys come back. We have um, training for the public every Monday and every Wednesday night. And then him and I are collaborating to do something on the weekends. Um, don't worry, we'll, put, we'll bring more AC in. <laughs> um, but, you know, from what BC shared and what Michael had shared, don't you think that the information is is very, very important to learn? We picked up some, at least something that, that we know is going to benefit us and benefit our family, right? Um, so to answer, I guess it was your question, you're, you're wondering if, you know, we go knock on doors. Was it you or was it this gentleman? It was you, right? Do we go knock on doors? If you're the type of person who likes to campaign knocking on doors, have at it, right? Um, but you know, what we do is we campaign financial literacy to provide the education to the family as fast as we can, because we can't wait. We don't, we, we don't want to sit here in the office and wait for people to come. Does that make sense? So for us, we're very active people. We go out, we make that phone call. And some of us, I'll be honest, I do have some friends who knock on doors and they love doing that. But if that's what people like to do, that's that's fine. Have Have you guys ever seen um, uh, presidential campaigns? They go knock on doors. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, do you guys know much about Martin Luther King when he was campaigning the civil rights movement? I mean, obviously we were not there, but if you read the history book, there was a lot of people knocking on doors. Hey, come together. We have some important topics to talk about that's going to help change our family and our future, right? So for those who, um, you know, is aggressive like that, that's wonderful. I applaud them. But for me personally, I don't like to knock on doors, <laughs> but I do love educating families. I do love sitting down with families and sharing them, you know, the importance of personal finances and, uh, you know, what, what we need to do. Would you guys agree with me that our future is very expensive? Yes. I mean, just look at before COVID <laughs> and after COVID. How expensive have life been? You're, you're in real estate, right, Sanyu? Yes, I am. <laughs> How crazy has the real estate world been? It's just shooting through. Ooh. Ooh. My sister and I are just still trying to buy a house in Boston. And every time we look at something, boom, it's gone. It doesn't matter how much the price is, right? So the other uh, question that I want to answer too is, well, how do you know what price it is? Honestly, when you find the important, when you find the value of it behind it, it's not about the price. It's how much you know that's going to help you, right? So... You know, what BC has shared is a little piece of information about our business too, what is it that we do, uh, all, all that good stuff. But what, what I want to share with you, and by the way, you know, uh, excuse my parents, I was actually on my way back home to Massachusetts driving. This guy flew here. I drove here. <laughs> so I was on my way back out, and then I knew he was coming. So I said, you know what? I got to, you know, stop by and uh, also say hello and also say goodbye after this. Um, but I want to take, a, you know, a moment to share with you about September. September is known as the National Life Insurance Awareness Month. Has anyone ever heard about it? Today's your first day? Okay. What, what, uh, anybody know about September 11? Were you guys here in the country already? Not yet. You heard about it, right? Life Insurance Awareness Month comes from that. When September 11 happened, it happens in New York, right? In the middle of the financial district, where all the beautiful, tall financial building is. And it killed a lot of people that work in the financial industry. So families thought, okay, you know what? I'm sure my husband or my wife who works over there put 
things in place, build a financial foundation, just like he mentioned, just like BC mentioned, life is good. But unfortunately, they found out there was no protection plan. There was no game plan for the family. So they were left very, very, very sad and lonely and broke. And so the government has to step in to try to help them as much as they can, right? But unfortunately, there's not a lot of money to help everybody that was in need. And that is the beginning of, you know, the life insurance story um, that people need to pay more attention to it, okay? Um, it's very important to talk about it. You know, BC had gone a little bit over about that. Um, you know, I just want to let you, uh, you know, some fun facts to share with you. Um, if you don't know anything about life insurance or don't believe in life insurance, you know, let me tell you, the banks of the world own the biggest life insurance. And just like what he said, you take the money and then you try to save it. And then the bank only gives you this much. And then, you know, uh, you have a chance to invest so much in other places. Do you know that you don't have to be the middleman? Someone mentioned middleman earlier. You don't have to be the middleman to bring the money to the bank and then have the bank try to save money for you. We all know that the bank takes our money and then they go reinvest it. And then they make all the money and then they only give us a little portion. So I don't know who you bank with, but these are the top 10 bankers out there that is growing our money this money, your money, your money, your money, all of our money, and look at what they have. Look at Bank of America. What is that? 24 what? Trillion. Trillion dollars. They didn't make that money just like that, but it's all of us pulling in together to put the money into their banks. But then they give us this small little percentage, and then they keep the rest wherever they go and make more money, right? So that's just one fun fact I want to share with you about life insurance. Another fun fact, I did this with the, at the office the other day. Mama Angela loves it. So I figured, you know what? Let me just share with you guys over here. Um, another fun fact, a lot of people may not understand life insurance or know how big we are. But all in all, there's a 5,900 insurance company in the U.S. And 737 is life insurance. Anybody knew that? Pretty big, right? Very, very big. Um, in our company, we are part of uh, an organization called World Financial Group. And we, meaning our licensed agents here, Michael, Mama Angela, and also um, Diana too, we represent 195 companies. So we pick and choose the best of the best for our clients when it comes time to it, right? Um, there's a lot that we do. So on the business side, what can we do? All this right here, you know, some of us mentioned term. Yes, we do term. We help people set up their term policy, uh, permanent policy, also health insurance, also savings, 401k, rollover, long-term care, so on and so forth. So on the business side, uh, Sanyu, you have a very strong platform. There is no clients out there on this earth that I say no to. I always refer back to my company and say, hey, I have this and this and this and this scenario with my clients. Do we have any type of policy that we can help them? And then they check it, database throughout the world, and then we find something to cover the family, right? Um, so, you know, if, if you guys don't have this book, make sure you get a copy from whoever invite you. This book saves lives. This book actually saved my own life. I was a very, very, you know, dead out, broke person, did not understand anything about money. And I actually used to work uh, here, uh, PwC. Anybody know PwC or Tyson's Corner? I used to work out there. And beautiful building, you know? Everything is gorgeous over there, but I could never save money at the end of the day until I started to read the literature. And then I went to all the workshops that, you know, he, he uh, but, uh, BC had mentioned. That is when I start to understand about personal finances for me, not for anyone else, right? Not for the person who brought me in, although I'm very thankful that he brought me into the business, but I was so empowered to learn stuff that I needed to build me. And now I feel so empowered and that's why I continue to build this business and got my license and then bring more people like Michael and Mama Angela in and make sure that they're licensed so that we can continue to help other people. So if you don't have the book, 
please get this copy. And uh, specifically about life insurance is 29 to 48. Okay. Oops. What is it um, about life insurance? Oh, no, my name is What is it about life insurance? Um, and who is it for? It's just a little snap, you know, of, it's for couples, for parents, and for single people. Single people. You're not single, so don't oh, turn it, uh, raise your hand. <laughs> Business owners like myself, right? Like you, kids, anyone. Anyone who lives needs life insurance. Because life insurance is not about death. It's about living. So when you are living, don't you want to create, you know, a plan and action? So I'm not going to read all this stuff, but it's basically saying that, you know, life insurance isn't a fun topic. I don't know about your guys' community, but my community, which is the Asian, most of us do not like to talk about life insurance. It's almost like a taboo. Oh my God, you talk about it. That means you want me to die. I mean, I'm just being real realistic, right? That's how our people treat us as a life insurance agent. Now, let me tell you, I, I, I used to think the same way, but now that I see the, the results of what I do, it really, really the most powerful license that I've ever owned. You know, long story short, uh, last a couple of days ago, one of my clients, my first client passed away. And guess how much I am going to deliver to their family? $400,000. And she was a single mom, barely had any money. And she was just trying to save away little by little, little by little, right? So there's a lot of great stories behind, you know, the license that we have. Um, but, you know, life insurance has to have a, a, a meaning, a very, very strong meaning. So I usually give this to my clients after, you know, I, I open a policy for them. And it says here, I don't know how to move that little mouse. Um, actually, Michael, can you read this for me? You and I have similar purposes in this world. Oh, I am your life insurance policy. You and I have similar purposes in this world. It is your job to provide food, clothing, shelter, schooling, medicine, and other things for loved ones. You do this while I lie in your safe bo de deposit box. I have faith and trust in you. Out of your earnings will come the cost of my upkeep. At times, I may appear <coughs> insignificant to you, but someday, and who knows when, you and I will change places. When you're laid to rest, I may be used to help pro uh, provide food, clothing, shelter, schooling, medicine, and other things your family will continue to need, just as you are now, uh, just as you are doing now. When you work and labor done, Mine will begin. Through me, your hands carry on. Whenever you feel the price you're paying for my upkeep is burdensome, remember that I can do more for you and your family than you will ever do for me. If you do your part, I will do mine. Sincerely yours, your life insurance policy. If you understand that message, you understand how powerful it is to have a life insurance. I mean, you're your mom, right? How many children do you have? Three. How much does it take to care for all three of them? <laughs> a lot, right? Cooking, cleaning, all the, not to mention the whole entire household, not to mention having to work, not to mention all the responsibilities that you have. So I'm sorry to say this, but when we are gone, who's going to pick up on that responsibility? That's the questions that we need to ask, right? This is where life insurance picked up the, the financial responsibility. Because no matter what, it doesn't matter how caring and loving our spouses are that we left behind, they cannot pick up the financial responsibility. They're going to have to move to a smaller place. They're going to have to sell some stuff. And I say this because it happens to my own friends and my own family. So when you have money, you have less worry. You have less concern, right? Um, you know, I love life insurance. So I just want to go through this quickly. You guys are definitely welcome back here to learn the workshops of each life insurance plan. But I'm just giving you a synopsis of what it is and how many they are, okay? 
uh, the evolution of life insurance. Life insurance has been around hundreds of years, hundreds of years. And uh, this is what it looks like to now. So anybody heard of term? Term policy is the first one was born. And then uh, gradually it turns into, you know, there's a new plan called whole life and then a universal life and then a variable universal life. And now we're in the era of the index universal life and also the long-term care, right? And that is the evolution of that. Now, term itself also has different features too. So there's a saying with term policy, you pay, you have a policy, right? And when you die, they pay your family. Just like a car insurance, you pay your car insurance, you can drive your car with ease. But when you don't, you, you don't have a car anymore, then you don't have to pay your car insurance. The same thing with life insurance. Term insurance is the same thing, right? So now how does this, um, this stuff work? Well, it is a life insurance plan. So there's always a cost to it. It's an insurance plan. It's a cost to it. Car insurance, there's a cost to it. And the cost always goes up. Just like car, you know, depending on uh, the, 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 the years, it, it goes up every single year. So term policy, every single year, it goes up. So how do you buy life insurance? Well, for term policy, you can buy them in five years, 10 years, 20 years term, up to 30 years. So if you buy up to 30 years or whatever the, the time frame is, you pay accordingly, okay? You pay the cost of insurance. So if you buy five years, you pay the average of what that five year is. If you buy 10 years, they take the age of the beginning to the age of the 10th year, then they average it and they give you that one price and then you pay that. Same thing if you get 30 years, okay? And it's very cheap. Term policy is very, very cheap. And um, there's something else called group life. I think we all know what group life is. Yes, no? When you work for your company, they give you some. And sometimes, you know, they give you 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, depending on the income that you make. And there's no, there's nothing special. If you happen to pass away during work, then they pay your family. But what if you pass away or, or what, what if you have an accident? Do they pay? Does your work pay if, if you don't, right? Why did you stop working? Do they continue to pay if something happens? No. So group term is specifically for a corporation at your job, at your work. If you have it, great. It's good while you're working there, but once you leave, that's it, it doesn't follow you. So it's very important to get your own personal policies so that you control and you can have it for the rest of your life. And then um, the next one is the whole life. Now, this one, people say, oh, you know what? It doesn't last forever. Let's say Michael got a policy at age 20 and he got 30 years. What? How old is he 30 years later? 50. What is the likelihood of Michael passing away at 50? Not likely because modern medicine and the way we are living these days, it makes us live a lot longer, right? So here he is, he turned 50 and he didn't die. What happened to all that money? Gone right? And there's no more policy. If he wants to renew it, it's going to be very sky high. So people have been asking, well, I want a policy that lasts forever. So then the industry built a new plan called the whole life. It's just like the work, it lasts the whole life. Now, all life insurance is term insurance. I don't care what any other agents out there say, okay? Every policy out there is a term policy. It lasts 30 years, but if you want to last more, there has to be a strategy. And what is that strategy? You have to put more money in, okay? So let's say, for example, a 20-year-old who gets a million dollar, okay? It might cost him, I don't know, 30 bucks. Let's just say 20, 20 30 dollars for a young guy. And then he didn't, you know, he wanted to last forever. Now he wants to get a whole life. It might cost him a hundred dollars. So it's a little bit more, right? So he has a million dollar in whole life, cost him a hundred dollars. And it's going to be like that for the rest of the, the life of the policy. Now, what if he doesn't want to pay forever? Can he have a choice? Yes, he does have a choice. Okay. So when you put money into the whole life, you get a chance to earn some interest between 2 to 
depending on the company. And that money is going to grow to build cash value and it's going to stay inside your life insurance policy and it's tax-free. So any money that grows inside a life plan, tax-free. You do not need to report that to Uncle Sam, right? Our, our, our uncle, our favorite uncle. <laughs> so then let's say Michael decided that after 30 years, he doesn't want to pay into it anymore. He's done with it. Can he do that? He can absolutely do that. He does not have to pay into the policy for the rest of his life because there's a cash value that's going to come out to continue to pay for the cost of insurance for as long as it lasts, okay? Now, and then, of course, people complain and the industry listen and they said, well, it's so fixed. I can't, you know, I, what if I don't have any money? Do I, do I need to pay $100 still? What if I want to, you know, lower it down to half a million or a quarter of a million? Cannot change. As a matter of fact, we don't even know how much they charge in insurance, uh, sorry, in the uh, uh, cost of insurance. And we don't even know how much money goes to work at that two, four percent. It's so fixed, it's so it's not flexible at all. But people want flexibility because life changes all the time. So of course the industry listens, Samuel, and they say, okay, let's build another plan called the universal life. Works exactly the same way. It's a term policy, last 30 years, but you got a chance to put more money in when you have more money. You get a chance to lower it down when life is a little bit tough, right? You get to skip a few payments if you want to. You get to, you know, raise, uh, uh, you know, the policy amount higher. However, life is changing, you can change to the, uh, you know, to, to that. Um, the interest on that is 3 to 6%. And somewhere around the 80s and 90s, when the market was really booming, remember the, the real estate, right? It was booming. The market was making good money. So now people who have money in the universal life, they said, I'm only getting three to 6%. That's not a lot. I want the market. Okay. So they listen. <laughs> the industry listened and they built something called a variable universal life. Okay. The word variable means variable product it goes into the market you are uh, you are investing your money into the market okay so with that you're able to build a sub account where you pick your stocks that you like and now whenever you send money in a hundred dollars two hundred dollars a thousand dollars whatever it is now you get a chance for that market to make money for you so yeah you can gain 20 30 40 50 percent but ladies and gentlemen, what happens when the market goes down? Can you lose money? Yes, you can definitely lose money. So they didn't like that either. So now we have the September 11, then we have the 2008 crash and people were losing money, right? And of course, people complain and then the industry come together and they say, okay, we need to help people, you know, build a better plan that, they're making money and they're saving money. So now we are in the era of the index universal light. So with this here, you're not dipping into the stock market, but your money is growing within the indexes. So there's a global index that has United States, China, Europe, things like that, right? And what they do is they create a floor and they create a ceiling, a floor and a cap. So most life insurance company right now, the floor is 0%, which means when you put in the money, $100, 200 $300, $1,000 that you put in, when the market goes down, Diana, you don't lose money. You're at least at zero. Your capital is safe, okay? But there's one company called Transamerica at least give you 0.75%. Does anybody here still put money in the bank to grow? And if you do, do you know how much they give nowadays? Uh, uh, I, I, I do Capital One and I think they give 0 0.01. Anybody got higher than me? How about your bank? Any bank beats me? <laughs> 0 0.02. 0 0.02? 0 <laughs> no, no bank is bigger than that? So if you look at this, this already beat the bank, right? Now, the cap is 13%. So when the market goes up 10%, you're going to make 10% as promised. Market goes up 13%, you're going to make 13% on your money as promised, right? But what if the market goes up 20%? What do you think happened to the difference? 
Would you be mad that the market went up and then you only get up to the cap of 13%? You would be. A lot of people would be, right? Because remember, greed, <laughs> we want, we want, we want. But I'll tell you something. Transamerica um, put the money into the reserve, right? So let's say you get uh, you cap at 13%. You got the 13%, but the market actually came or the index came in at 20%. So you have 7% difference. That 7% they put into the reserve and that money continue to be safe and sound there, right? So when the market goes down, they got the reserve to promise us we will never lose money. Make sense? And I love that. Even if I get a zero floor, I'm okay. At least I'm not losing. You know, the last four or five years has been very tough on a lot of people. Uh, and, and they just simply don't understand why their money keeps on going down. Actually, a gentleman, one of my friend here, his friend, he looks at his 401k every single day. Oh my God, I'm losing again. I'm losing again. I'm, well, do something about it. Right? Do something about it. So, um, and then of course, with this one, you have the ability to grow more cash flow. The idea of having a permanent policy is to gain the interest, right? The more interest you get, the more cash flow you're going to build. Now with this one, I'll tell you, it beats that one and that one because the interest is high and you have a chance to compound the interest. Just like BC said, right? We've got to learn about compounding interest. That is the only way that you're going to make a lot of money. That's the only way that you're going to be able to build cash flow. And like I said, life is very expensive, you know, in the future. We've got to make sure we've got the right plan. The other, the other plan that we all need to talk about is long-term care. This one is huge. This one is huge. So whether you work for somebody or whether you work for yourself, you need to get health insurance. We all know that, right? Health insurance only take care of you when you are in the hospital. You go for surgery, you go for consultation, doctor's visit or whatever, checkup, all that stuff. Your health insurance will pay for it. 80% their responsibility, 20% your responsibility. But let's say you go for surgery, right? And things are going really well. And now you wake up and the doctor says, okay, time to go home, but you are going through long-term care. You're gonna be knocked out, not able to work. You cannot take a shower by yourself. You can't eat by yourself. You cannot move by yourself. You're gonna need professional help at home. So that is called long-term care, okay? So if you don't have a long-term care plan, how are you going to pay for those bills? Because that is going to be a very heavy bill on you. Either uh, your family give up their job to take care of you, or you hire a nurse to come take care of you, or you go to the, the facility to have somebody take care of you. Either way, whichever one you choose, it's going to cost your pocket. Because health insurance does not take care of that part anymore because you're outside the hospital. You're done, right? They're done. So it's very important to learn about long-term care plan. If you have a million dollar long-term care plan, you can access 2% of it when you go through long-term care. What's 2% of 1 million? $20,000. That means you are not able to work. You still need income, right? You, you're not working anymore because you can't. And there's no income coming in, but does that mean your rent or your mortgage is going to also take a break too? Or you you know put food on the table for the kids and things like that? No, those things don't take a break. They continue to go on. So if there's no money coming in, how are you going to support that? But would it be nice to have access to $20,000 every single month for as long as you need it? And that is long-term care, right? Um, and then on the other hand too, <laughs> Because life in America has been very crazy. Let me ask you, how long have you been in this country? Uh, 15 years. 15 years, how about you? Five. Five years, okay. 25. Oh, 25, okay. Mama Angela? 20. 20. About 20. How about the gentleman back there? How long have you been in this country? 20. 20 years? Okay, how about you, ma'am? 20. Wow, 20 years. Have you noticed that the environment here is very different than where you come from? 
the food, right? The environment, the way we live here, it's different. For me, I come from Cambodia. We eat organic because we grow stuff in the backyard, you know? So none of my family ever had any type of illnesses like cancer or any of those things. But after 20 years in this country, I'm not saying 20 years to, to mock you guys anything, but for our, we know this, after 20, 25 years, we're starting to feel sick, you know, an, an abnormal kind of sick. So now in my family, mom had cancer, aunt had cancer, grandma had cancer, everybody in my family seems to have cancer. We've never had cancer before. So let me tell you, I went through this a lot with my family. So I understand, you know, the caring aspect of it, right? So a lot of companies right now, they talk a lot about, you know, long-term care plan. It is very costly, but if you understand how to buy it as a rider inside a life insurance plan, it's actually, the cost is less. But nevertheless, uh, even the term policy, term policy is known as a death benefit. But now it's also known as a living benefit, okay? It takes care of chronic illness and critical illness and terminal illness situation. So if you happen to have a very high blood pressure and it just knock you out and you get so ill and you get into that chronic or critical, uh, critical stage, if you have a million dollar in term policy, you could actually access it so that you can have that money to become your income replacement. You see? So all this information I'm sharing with you today, it's not thoroughly everything, but it definitely is, it needs to be a conversation with you, your family. We all need to learn about it because even with this information I shared with you in the last 10, 15 minutes, do you see the value of what life insurance can do for you and your family? You see the value of what life insurance can do for your family or for yourself? Absolutely, right? And I'm just talking about the benefit of what life insurance does. We're not even talking about the ability of how much cash they can build for us to give us that financial security. Myself, I have three, I have five policies. I have term, I have funeral, uh, concierge plan. I have uh, three IULs. I have three of these. Altogether, my coverage is about almost three million. And people go, oh, Michelle, you are single. You don't have any kids, no responsibility. Da, da, da. I say, I know. I know we don't have any responsibility. But because I don't have any children, who's going to take care of me when I get older and may go through long-term care? And my mom says this to me all the time. When are you going to have kids? And so I said, I don't know if I'm going to. And she said, I worry about you. Like straight face, she says, I worry about you because you are taking care of me. My mom is 74. You are taking care of me and I appreciate it. But when you get to my age and you are sick like me, who's going to take care of you? That's why I worry about. So I joke, mom, I have $3 million policy. And she's like, whatever. But it's true though. In my policy, should I go through that now or later? I have plenty of money to access so that I can hire a professional nurse to come and take care of me. You see, I don't need to buy life insurance because I'm going to give it to someone else. Yes, whatever's left over can go to whoever my beneficiaries are, right? But I worry about myself. While I'm still alive and I go through those things, I need to make sure I have money to protect me, to take care of me. Because I do not want to go and have to get into more debts. You see? So... A lot to learn, you know. Uh, you never know which life insurance is the right one for you. And I'll say that, just looking at this, what do you think is the right one for you? Just just based on the little information I shared. What do you think? The uh, long-term care thing. This one? Yeah. Okay, that hits the spot. Okay, what about you, Mitch? Don't think about money. Don't think how much you need to pay for it. Just think about... Which one would be the right one for you? Michael, someone said it off. Then this one, or this one, or that one. Well, for me, it's very rare uh, if I retire here. So maybe if I retire here, it would be the long term. It doesn't matter. It'll follow you. It follows you. Yeah. It follows you. It follows yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're going to work with your child. 
So, so you're saying is two. Oh, okay, you're saying is two. But the infrastructure and the care settings, not in most countries over there. I'm willing, willing to bet my last round. There's categories. There's different categories. There's, um, there's, there's different categories, different categories uh, country, right? Category A, B, C, D, E, whatever. Um, A, B, C, what is Uganda? B? Okay, we need to help. <laughs> we need to help Uganda. <laughs> so A, B, C, they're more flexible, okay? But D and, uh, D and beyond, just a little bit tweaking. But I'll tell you, being 14 years in this industry, I've seen a lot of changes, seen a lot of changes. But if you get a policy here, right? I'm just sharing with you uh, Trans America, but there's many other companies that will take care of you even when you're overseas, right? Or let's say you got a policy here and you happen to go home and you pass away there, what happened? Your family will still get the, the benefits. I'm having that going on right now. My client uh, passed away in Bolivia, in another country. They, they they just finished the funeral, the, you know, the last couple of days. And I already called Trans America. That's the policy that I wrote them with. And they already processing all the paperwork and stuff like that. So by the time the sun gets here, I'm hoping that, you know, I have to check for them. You know? And here's the beautiful part about what we do. We're just not talking about this stuff and saying, you need life insurance. Let me, you know, write a policy for you. When these boys come back, after they their morning time, I'm gonna have a sit down talk with them because what this is what their mom wanted me to do. Provide them the financial education that they need before they start using the money. Right? 22, 23 year old. Each one of them is gonna get two hundred thousand dollars. What do you think they're gonna do? Oh my god, that's a lot of money. They're gonna go spend it, right? right. So I'm a financial educator. I'm very proud of that. I will sit them down. I'm going to tell them, you got to go to all the workshops that we have. You have to graduate it, get certified, and then I will give you the money. Yes. I mean, regardless, they'll probably fight me for it. I will need to give it to them anyways. <laughs> but, you know, you have to educate it. You have to get educated properly so that your money is going to last longer. And my game plan for these two boys is that, I want to make sure I open a, a, their own policy, put that money in there, and let that money grow for them continuously, tax free. And you give them the idea that if they are not going to do that, yeah. And they so, put that. the only way to know what kind of policy that you need is you need to go through this a personal financial strategy. He just talked a lot about that, right? We need to know your situation. We need to know your goals, your dreams, your game plan. What is it that you want, right? Because life insurance or any type of uh, savings plans or whatever, it needs to make sense to you. I am an advocate for this. I don't open any policies for anybody unless they go through this with me. Why? Because I want to do the right service for you, right? You know, I love my brother Kevin back there to death. But I'm not going to say, hey, Kevin, you need a half a million dollars. Just put a thousand dollars into it. No, that's a disservice, right? Would he do it? He probably would just because he trusts me. But I need to know how much income are you bringing in as a family, right? What have you been doing with that money so far? Have you built assets? Now people look at me like, what do you mean? I just spend. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry. Typically when we have money, we try to build this. We try to build that. We try to be at land, right? And then I look at the liabilities. Okay, let's see what you've been spending money on and are you, you know, are you uh, owing anything? Your car, your mortgage, you still owe the mortgage, credit cards. Oh, the credit card one is crazy. <laughs> I've had many clients whose credit card is this high and their emergency fund is this low, right? So we look at all that. We also look at the monthly expenses. You know, what is your money habits? What do you spend money on? And then at the end, when I calculate it, I'm going to find out what do they have left at the end of the month. And then whatever they have left, let's say they have a thousand left at the end of the month. I would ask them, so do you have a thousand dollars at the end of the month? Uh, I spend it. <laughs> so 
I said, if you have a thousand left at the uh, end of the month, why is your emergency fund zero, right? Why your emergency fund is only a couple, maybe last you a month or two months. So these are the things that we work with. And then once we understand your money habits and understand the kind of debts that you might have, what kind of interest rate that's eating up your money, oh my goodness, we need to work on that. Try to help you cut down everything so that you can start to build a real financial freedom, right? And then we can start to build a financial foundation for you. So, you know, financial security is not, it, it, it's not complicated. Hello. It's not complicated. It just needs understanding. Like right now, before I, uh, this financial foundation, before I um, came in to learn about this, I had zero protection plan. My trainer at the time says, Michelle, you're living on a, uh, on, on a, what is it, the, uh, the eggshell, right? On the edge of death. Because if something were to happen to you, you have no protection plan. What are you going to do? Put yourself into more debt. You see? Debt. For debt management, I had over $100,000 because of school loans, mortgage, credit card, lots of credit cards. So, Michelle, like you see in front of you today, a little bit more disciplined, okay? <laughs> Me back then, not so disciplined. And then emergency fund, I had zero because I used to work in the mall. And what does the mall teach you? Spend. If you guys, any of you guys come into my mall or my store, I'll make sure you walk out of there with hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you spent <laughs> because that's my job. And because I did it so well, I become the best spender too. If you walk into my store, I'm going to make sure I tell you that I'm a good spender <laughs> so you can do the same thing. And then for investment, I had nothing. No plan for my future whatsoever. So my trainer looks at it and say, oh my gosh, we really need to work at this. So, you know, long story short, seven years. It took me about seven years to clean up my act. And now I tell you, I'm debt-free, completely debt-free. Life is so much more lighter nowadays. I don't wake up to, want, you know, needing to pay bills anymore. Emergency fund, I have more than, uh, my family and I actually have more than a year's worth of it. Um, travel protection, the whole entire family, we have about 5 million, 3 million for me personally. And then right now, I just wake up every day to saving money. Every single month right now, I, I negotiate with myself. I said, look, Michelle, your future is very expensive. You need to put a certain amount away every single month. I fight with myself. I'm saving $100 a month to then move to 200. It was really, really tough. It's when I start to clear out my debt is when I was able to save more, right? So now I save no less than $5,000 a month. Every single month, I got to make sure I pay myself first, right? I got to pay Michelle first because I'm the one who's going to be in my future. None of you guys, none of my family. So I got to make sure I'm secure first, right? And... Uh, you know, I, I play around the, with the numbers and then I said, okay, 5000 every single month. I'm going to definitely be very financially secure when I decide to retire, right? But, you know, that's what I want to share with you. Um, financial security, financial freedom, life insurance, all that stuff. It's not complicated. It just needs understanding. And once you understand it, you're going to see that, wow, I can do this. I can have full control of it, right? So if you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm you know, I'm here uh, for a little bit longer to help ask anything. And welcome uh, the, the, the folks who just came in. I'm sure Michael's gonna brief everybody. But you know, um, I hope that you did find values in what we shared from VC to Michael and I, but we also want to invite you to become a part of us too. You know, I believe in continued education. You, what you hear today sounds good, but by the time you get home, you're going to lose a lot 